Hello everyone and welcome back. I know I should be stopping with all these bloodline builds since we have quite a lot already, but I'm starting to find more and more ways to allow the weapons to become more commonplace in most builds that lack healing. Funnily enough, today's build actually fits well for the design of Barry Bloodline and his non-stop healing effect. Combining Machina's Trick Sleep with Barry Bloodline is kind of like combining yin and yang together. While one requires you to literally hurt yourself for the buff alone, another will heal you in the process. And this right here will make the two a viable side on meta choice in the near future, or even now. Now with these two combos, you can get a 100% damage buff via Machineers, non-stop heal and invis when activated, a 20% prime rate and heavy weapon buff, proactive survivability from the get-go, and a risk reward playstyle designed for those who enjoy sidearms and know what they are doing. I didn't expect this to work, but hey, I ain't complaining. So let's make a start. To start, you're going to want to have Vanishing Step where dodging makes you invisible. Then you want Trapper's Ambush where activating Quickfall will make you and your allies invisible. The most common defensive option to have for the build, the following will allow you to survive in lethal situations to where activating Machina's exotic effect may not always fully work out. The fragments used are Echo Obscurity where doing the finisher on a target makes you invisible. Echo of Undermining, where your Void Grenades will apply a debuff to targets. Echo of Persistence, where Void Buffs applied to you last longer. And Echo of Reprisal, where Final Blows, while surrounded, grants super energy. While Echo of Obscurity, Persistence and Reprisal is going to be a must-have for the build, Echo of Undermining is going to help you push all your weapons damage by just an extra bit more in the long run. To be honest, when it comes down to Fragments, the Void Fragments don't offer a lot to pick and choose from, sadly. And some of the ones I would pick would require me to take into effect the negative debuffs that will be applied to my stats. I have found that the following to be a good all round selection to pick and choose from that don't take too much away from me, but also greatly benefit the build from start to finish. For modern stats, having a high discipline stat will help with negating the minus effect that Echo Undermining has, but also granting us a nice debuff when needed. A Discipline at tier 10 will grant you a 53 second cooldown when using magnetic grenades and is probably the best choice to use here when applying a debuff to targets. Since the grenade explodes twice on targets, the initial second damage will be higher than the first since that's when the undermining effect kicks in. This will ultimately allow our weapons to finish the targets at a faster rate compared to most other grenades in game. At the same time, with its cooldown rate, we can reduce it even more by applying certain mods such as having Grenade Kickstart mod, which will grant us a 34.4% grenade energy return on 4 armor charges. And then we have Distribution, which will grant us a 4% ability energy back for all, which is low but still feasible. Lastly, you then have Tether that will not only really debuff targets but will also grant you ability energy back from kills made, and also devour secondary effect. So even if we kept this stat at a much lower rate, it was still gone enough energy back at a rapid pace. Although I never mentioned it, your resilience stat will also play an important role within the build in terms of increasing the likelihood chance of activating Machina's effect. My stat is at tier 7 for a 20% damage reduction, and outside of this stat alone, we don't have any other sources being made in play. Now, you can increase this to a tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction instead, which would allow you to survive almost most one-shot hits, but having it in between a tier 5 to 10 is feasible enough. You could also look into adding the emergency reinforcements mod that provides a 10% damage reduction when you hit critical health, which would be ideal for us. However, it takes away 3 armor charges in the process, and it doesn't seem worth the mod slots for such a small amount. Now once this is all done, this will then leave you room for additional mods, such as charged up, giving us plus 1 to armor charges held. Then having stacks and stacks will grant us 2 orbs of power collection rather than 1. Having harmonic or connect siphon will allow us to create orbs of power while on the go, while powerful attraction will make it easier to collect orbs once our class ability is free. Lastly, having special and heavy ammo finder mod is a must have for how often you'll be using the two, while ammo reserve and scavenger will further aid you from there. For weapons, we have three to contend with. All three will provide a synergized buff that benefits players. For starters, we have Warden's Law with Warper Weapon and 4th Time Charm, a perfect weapon to use and operate with in terms of maxing out your overall damage in a small time frame. The perk combo is one of the God Rolls players should aim for if possible, while just having 4th Time to Charm is also fine. 
I use the following for the general routine of the build while also using it to take out the more bigger targets as we go along. Next, we then have the Berry Bloodline, which when paired with Machina's Trick Sleeve, will provide a major boost of 100% damage buff for 5 seconds. This weapon is already good on its own, since it has a much higher damage threshold than what other sidearms offer. As well as having Devour built into his auto trait, the following is a great season 23 weapon to use when applied against barrier champions or anything from a major tier and up. Not everyone will have this weapon, so if you don't have it just of yet, do remember there are other options available, such as Devil's Ruins, Forerunner, and Final Warning, etc. Heavy is the commemoration machine gun with redirection and reconstruction, the ideal weapon and weapon type to have for covering mid to long ranges. This has been a great weapon to use against champions, ultras, mini bosses, and bosses overall, while at the same time allowing us to activate a nice damage boost from damaging weaker enemies. If you're unable to get this specific role or weapon in general, then either go with a Roid Rocket Launcher, or get the Circular Logic which offers a similar feel that the current machine gun offers, but is strand related instead. So when it comes down to talking about Machina's Trick Sleeve, there's not been much talk based around the uses of them with the many new exotic sidearms in game, including using it with Berry Bloodline. There are many reasons for this, from using sidearms in most end game just not being viable enough, better exotics, risk versus reward of the exotic, a lack of uniqueness from the exotic, etc. But from what I've gathered, it's mainly the risk reward factor of using the sidearm that puts many players off, which I can see. Now, with the exotic, you can only activate it when you reach critical health, and from there, you'll get an outright 100% damage increase that lasts for 5 seconds, and will also refresh per kill made by 3 seconds. Although damage does become incredibly high and noticeable to the point of easily taking off, say, two thirds of a champion's health via precision hits, the risk of surviving that long puts the player in a very risky role of executing this perfectly, or else failing in the process. With most weapons, you wouldn't use this in end game unless you feel like you know what you're doing, but using it with Bloodline actually benefits the playstyle Machinaeus is after. I have found that if you reach critical health and activate Machinaeus effect, and then activate Bloodline's effect of Devour afterwards, you can keep the damage buff going while also getting health back in the process. Also, each kill made will refresh your magazine per kill made, so once everything is rolling on your end correctly, you can keep this active buff going for as long as you like. No word of a lie, I didn't expect this to actually work, as I was expecting it to cancel each other out with their buffs, but for my surprise this build actually works the way I wanted to do and it's actually quite a beast when using Grandmasters. Since everything hits hard in this one game mode, you can activate this buff consistently without even needing to reduce your resilience stat to do so, while at the same time having the option to go in invis and use Terra to further help with the damage and survival means that the build is very much ready for the risk reward factor. However, please be aware that the build will have limitations in terms of range, which is why I'm using a machine gun or other long range weapons to help. I also recommend you don't use this build in GMs just of yet until you have played around with it in other endgame content, such as Legend Seasonal Activity. It will greatly boost your damage by 10 volts, but the risk of dying is very high unless you know exactly what you're doing. Outside of that though, you now have a dedicated Bloodline build that really allows you to release this inner power, so enjoy! So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content to share, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. I want more stuff like this that I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.